talk my way into an internship with Robert Altman, who at the time was one of the preeminent American directors. And when I was 26, I guess, 27, I read in the trades that Jane Fonda wanted to make a movie about secretaries with Lily Tomlin. She was in a movie that Altman produced, and with Dolly Parton, who I had done a little piece for a share special, she was the guest. And so I thought, well, I'm the perfect person for this. So I went off and I came up with just the most simple idea, which is three secretaries with the worst boss of the world who hate him so much they want to kill him. We ended up with a really big kid and teen audience, which we, we didn't foresee. And looking back, I think it's just because Hart is any authority figure. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to be in an office. The fact that we appealed to such a wide range of people, were, it was anybody who felt, um, you know, not heard. So I was really excited to hear um, that you guys were, were doing it. And I do believe it still has something to say. I've always been interested with the theater program here. So in eighth grade, I'd come out some days and I'd get to watch the junior high and high school productions. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I watched it with my friend Philip and we both looked at each other and we were like, we gotta do this. I didn't even know where it was at first. And we went there and I had so much fun that I just kept doing it over and over. It's almost like a stress reliever, really, because I'd like finish a hard day, say I just had a test, and I'd go across the field to the workshop. You get a blueprint, because it's very like stress relieving. You just, okay, I need to do this. Do it for a few hours, and it's just like a few hours where you can just focus on one thing. It's, it's just like another medium. You're constructing things freely. We have a little bit of a template, but you know, we're forced to you know, think about how things work. I'm a Lego guy. I love doing this, and that's what I did growing up. I created you know, cars or places or castles, and then that's the kind of student that comes through here. You're creating this world, this thing, and then you're taking your Lego design and putting people in it. You're creating lives and worlds and full storylines within your, you know, your big Lego creation. I've done construction since I was a little kid. I've just like going to my uncle's house, just building, using tools that I really shouldn't be using. And I just love the, the development of from an idea to a concept and that whole in between. All you have are single pieces of wood and screws and you turn them into a giant set. And of course you have to glue and hammer and probably you'll bleed along the way. But in the end, you make what is on stage. And that's just amazing to me. It wasn't even until like last year when I did advanced stage design where I started actually drafting ground plans for shows that I like poured my heart and soul into something and I could say I love this despite the 50 hours of work I did, nothing would let me not love this. Well, I think it all goes back to telling the story. You could tell the same story any number of ways, and every element that you add makes, you could almost say the texture of the story that much more full. Seeing the actors do a run through, they're phenomenal, but it's not the same as seeing them in costume and with a set around them and an actual physical world for them to interact with. For example, if you watch a show without lighting, it's completely different. The mood is changed and different things can be emphasized or de-emphasized with the help of lighting. 
Props and decorations are really like the icing and the cherry on the cake. They do such an amazing job to encompass the story. A stage can only get you so far, the lighting can only set so much of the scene, but everything that happens inside it is really up to them. Although you can tell a story with just black box, say with nothing on stage, it is much, much more in-depth to have a stage, props, etc. And all that is done in theater tech, the lighting, stage drops, props, everything that you see is put on a, to create this illusion that is the theater. When the first light comes on, it's the orchestra doing the overture. It's, it's nerve-wracking, like I'm nervous before, but then once we start getting into it, it's, it just flows really nicely most of the time. Sometimes I feel there are different ways in a musical to tell the story. Sometimes there is an emotional response from a song that you, wouldn't, you just wouldn't get from a play. Music inspires an emotion in the listener immediately. Music inspires emotion and action in a performer, as well as the audience. A lot of the time, there are songs that lead up to a scene and you can tell that it's gonna be more sad or happier based on like what instruments you're playing and how fast or how slow you're going. There's something really sort of emotionally present about music that words can't do. So if you sort of imagine the last huge number of a musical where everyone's singing, everyone's dancing, the orchestra's playing, that kind of energy is unreplicable in any other art form. For me, I don't really like public speaking or talking in front of audiences, and music is a nice way to express myself without using words. I started playing music in eighth grade, and since then I feel like I've met a ton of people. I mean, obviously playing music, that's a huge part of it. It's a way to express yourself and have fun, but another huge part of it is meeting people. It's been actually amazing to see the progress from the orchestra members who have done multiple shows. You know, as freshmen, almost every freshman comes in and they're overwhelmed by not only the technical difficulty, but the length. And by the time they're seniors, I'm not teaching the part, it's I'm counting on these people to be leaders in the cast. <laughs> So I think what makes 9 to 5 so unique is how many different styles of music there are. In the past few years it's been more traditional, I guess classical music or like folk music and country, um, but this has more of like a rock element to it. This musical specifically, since it's by Dolly Parton and has like that southern feel, you can't, you can't get that without the musical accompaniment. There's a different experience when you're watching a play with a recorded soundtrack and with the orchestra soundtrack it, it makes it much more real almost when you have a live orchestra a lot less staged the best part is after you learn all the music you get to go and be part of the actual play and watch the play because you have all the music memorized so you get a chance to really know the play inside and out is such an inclusive environment. When you're in a room, whether you're on stage or off stage or backstage or in the booth, you're all a part of something bigger than you. And every aspect is sort of a piece of the puzzle. Each little piece adds to it and it makes it so much more. It just adds like a spark to it. Even if you're brand new, you're part of the family right away. Everybody's really accepting and you just come in and it's all of these people who like theater as much as you do, and 
want to make this production as great as you want it to be. That feeling in your gut that's got you in a rut. You are made of letter plugs and you can change it. So I started doing theater my freshman year and um, that was just like overall like a really crazy difficult year for me and so theater was honestly like my saving grace that year like I just put my whole heart into it and I went every day to rehearsal when I did the musical it was sort of where I found my people I mean it's where I could find my place at the school and then kind of branch out from that as a little kid you sort of you find outlets whether it's a sport or it's theater or it's music you find that and you stick to it because that allows you to kind of form who you are as a person. I'm more of an introverted person, so acting really helps me like kind of break out of my shell and like push my comfort zone. It's a great way to escape every real day problems where it's a, it's a period for three hours after school, you just get to forget everything and everyone in a whole room is focusing just on this one thing. It's, it's beautiful in that way. I definitely feel that acting styles vary from person to person, and so it's part of the rehearsal process to sort of get that into a blend that makes it a good scene. When you see an actor in rehearsal, they're using their intelligence, they're using their five senses, they're using their emotional instrument, they're using their physical instrument. It's like all parts of the being are being employed at that moment. Acting is all about growing and it's actually figuring out who you are yourself because you, you're in such a vulnerable state. You're just there completely open, just trying to do something fulfilled and with all of your heart. And it's, it's a very vulnerable state because you're up for rejection as well, whether it be like an audition, but it's definitely worth it in the end. Consolidated helps you with your kids' productivity increases. They haven't met my kids. Job sharing? What's job sharing? Can I give away my whole job? <laughs> Come on, guys. Where's your team spirit? Since when do we have team spirit? Uh, even though uh, 9 to 5 was written in uh, the late 70s, uh, I still think that many of the themes are very relevant today. I remember the first day of rehearsal, we watched a bunch of commercials from 1979, and they were ridiculous. All about women at home, like, cooking and cleaning and stuff. And I remember watching that, and I was like, oh, like, this is fun, like, you know, whatever. And then Adele, like, went into this whole speech about, like, that's what that time period looked like for a lot of women and that's why everyone wanted to go get a job because like if you're seeing that all the time on television that's insane like that's the only message you're getting we're very more progressive than we were in the 70s when the show takes place but it's sort of calling out things that still haven't changed and i think we're a very progressive school and i think it'll play out well to not only girls and women, but men who kind of understand that like this has been an ongoing fight. That's why I like the fact that we're doing this musical because unfortunately it's still very relevant now. It has been weird. It's been really surreal because I remember when I was in ninth grade and I remember all the seniors and I felt so small and they felt so big and now I'm in the same position where I'm the senior and I don't feel I don't feel like a senior. It happened. Time happened. To think of these seniors when they were freshmen is very, uh, I don't know, it makes me sentimental, it makes me proud. They are so self-driven. When freshmen come into the program, they're kind of like deers in headlights and you can see them really assessing the system. I think that they want to like help us get started with it because like we're so new and maybe we're not used to it. It 
it's not really hit me yet that this is the last show. I don't think it's hit any of us yet, really. And I know during the musical cast party, we're just all gonna be in tears. And we get to see what's in the green box, which is this theater tradition, and the green box is a set that's used in every show. And at the end of the musical, all the seniors get to see what's inside it. I'm almost like, you know, I've done my, done my time. It's as much as I can give, and it's also a good, moment and it's a good show to end on because it's a great show so but it'll be sad definitely when it's over.